Before we go into division, we need a couple more tools available. And one of the tools that we're going to want is a rule for when and how we round when we're computing in scientific notation. Because when we go into division, we aren't going to have the option to just leave our answer as a fraction. So, okay. This has to do with what the significant digits represent. Remember, the more significant digits a number has, the more information it contains about whatever it is that's being measured. And, you know, thinking about it, it doesn't seem likely that doing arithmetic to our numbers is going to make our measurement more precise. And so, when we're thinking about how to round, we want to round so that we don't pretend that we have more information than we really do. So with that in mind, we have rounding rules based on significant digits. When should you use these rounding rules? Well, in real life, you should use them whenever you're really paying attention to precision. In math class, you should use them when the instructions say round based on significant digits, or if they just say pay attention to or attend to or just use significant digits. Okay, so what are the rules? As is usually the case, we have one set of rules for addition and subtraction another set of rules for multiplication and division. So in addition and subtraction, we're lining up place values. And because of that, what we really want to pay attention to when we're thinking about rounding is that we don't take credit for more places than we're entitled to. So for that reason, when we add or subtract, we'll round to the rightmost place that appears in both numbers. What does that mean? I'm going to show you an example. Let's say we want to do this subtraction problem. 3.71 times 10 to the third minus 4.03 times 10 to the second. Now, notice I have different magnitudes. That won't do. I need to rewrite with the same magnitude. So my 4.023 times 10 to the second, that's 4.023 times 10 to the negative 1 times 10 to the third. I'm using the larger magnitude. So 4.023 times 10 to the negative 1, that's 0 0.4023, and then the times 10 to the third is still there. So my original problem then becomes 3.71 times 10 to the third minus 0 0.4 0, 2, 3 times 10 to the third. And now I'm going to actually do that subtraction. I'm going to just go ahead and subtract on my calculator. I'm taking 3.71 minus 0 0.4023. And I get 3.3 3077. Okay, but I'm not actually entitled to that much precision. Why? Well, because this number only has two digits after the decimal point. It only extends to, well, this looks like the hundredths place if I ignore the magnitude. This number has those two digits and then two more beyond that. 
And so my answer has those two digits and then two more beyond that. But these extra two digits I only knew from one of my numbers, not both of them. So really, the most I'm entitled to is this second digit after the decimal point. I'm going to round to that place and I'll get 3.31 times 10 to the third. The rightmost place that appears in both numbers then, that's just this hundredths place in something multiplied by 10 to the third. Okay, so that's the harder of the two rules. The easier rule is the one for multiplication and division. Remember that when we multiply and divide, the actual place values don't really matter. Why not? Well, because we multiply or divide the units as well. That means that the place values shift around all over the place. What really matters when we're thinking about the precision is just how many significant digits we actually have. So we're going to round to have the smaller number of significant digits of the two numbers. Again, let's see an example. Let's say we're multiplying these two numbers together. 3.00 times 10 to the eighth. Why are those zeros there? Because this number has three significant digits. times 3.15576 times 10 to the seventh. This has one, two, three, four, five, six significant digits. When we multiply them together, we're going to round to three significant digits. So let's see what that looks like. All right, we'll have 3.00 times 3.1576 and then that's going to be times 10 to the 8 plus 7. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to use the calculator for that decimal multiplication because that doesn't look like much fun. I've got 3.00 times 3.15576. Okay, so without rounding, I've got 9.46728 times 10 to the 15th. But I need to round to have 1, 2, 3 significant digits. Uh, here's a 6, the next digit is a 7, so I'll round up. I get 9.47 times 10 to the 15th.